Hello, lovely humans! Jen Foxbot here. In this episode of Math Mondays, we are starting to move on from polarization. So, if you've been following along, you will have learned that applying an electric field to a non-conductive object, or a dielectric, will cause charges in that material to move apart, to separate. They'll also hang out on the surface, but they are stuck to the object itself. So, in other words, we can call these bound charges, because they can't really go anywhere. And, if you've been following along, you might have started asking, wait a second, if you have charges that are separated in the object, that creates a force between them. And a force between charges results in an electric field. <gasps> yes! Uh, so we're starting to dig in to electric displacement. And we can ask, what is the field that is caused by polarization. Ooh, so fun. Okay, so let's start with a randomly shaped object and say that this object has a polarization P, um, which is also the dipole moment per unit volume. And we wanna ask, what is the field at a uh, distance script R from the object. So let's start with the electric potential because it's a little bit easier. So the equation for electric potential is this, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We are going to use the version that uh, uh, leverages dipole moments. Um, and so that is uh, script r dot the dipole moment, the little lower case 1. Um, over script R squared. Okay, but since uh, the polarization is the dipole moment per unit volume, the total dipole moment is just the polarization summed up over that whole volume. So you take all of these teeny tiny dipole moments and you add them up throughout the whole volume. Note, there are a lot of these, so that's okay. We know that this is true, we plug this in, we do our due diligence, and we start to look for things where we can be a little bit lazy. So this equation ends up be turning into a, um, an integral because we need to add up all of these dipole moments for the unit volume, um, or over the total volume, and we can replace this quantity with uh, the, the uh, polarization, and then we have d tau prime. Okay, so we're going to do a really cool math trick, which is one of the reasons why I love physics. So uh, the definition of a unit vector is this. Let me just make sure that I did that right. Um, and so we can also rewrite this to be... Um, Whoopsies, this is a hat. Script R squared goes on the bottom. Because if you move this over, you have the same exact equation. But we end up having something like this in this equation. And because we know where we're trying to go, we are going to replace uh, this with this quantity. In other words, what we get is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We still have our integral, um, and we end up with script r hat dot the uh, polarization, um, whoopsies, whoopsies, del prime. Um, do, 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 what am I missing? I am missing something. I think I did it backwards. I did. Okay. So you end up with, we're going to flip it and reverse it. Um, so uh, p polarization dot del prime times 1 over script r d tau. Okay, so now we are going to do um, uh, integration by parts using product rule number 3. And so we get b r equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Whoopsies! This is going to be a bracket. Um, so the first term is going to be del prime times uh, the polarization divided by script R 
over the volume uh, minus the integral over the volume times one over script r um, del prime dot p. And there should be a dot there, I forgot that. Times d tau. Okay, let me double check my notes because that is a long equation. Okay, cool, no big deal. It's really crooked. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> but so it goes. I get very excited and very crooked. Okay, so then we use the divergence theorem to simplify this further. I'm actually going to distribute this term because we're going to look at it and start to notice some things. So 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral over the volume on um, this first term simplifies, again using the divergence theorem, um, to uh, the polarization. Oh, oh, wait, uh, the divergence theorem. This turns into a surface integral. Da, da, da. Um, so uh, the polarization dot dA prime, that's a vector, um, minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. This one doesn't really do anything. Um, yeah, we can't simplify that anymore. Del prime dot the polarization vector d tau prime. Okay, but now you might start to notice something looks familiar. Okay, so let's make some space up here. I can erase our cool math trick. We don't need this equation anymore, but we do need this one. Okay, so I'm going to use some colors. Okay, so this term right here really looks like the potential of a surface charge. <gasps> hey! Okay, so uh, the potential of a surface charge looks like this. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught um, integral over the surface. Well, I'll just rewrite this actually. Dot dA prime. Well, for a general surface. Um, so basically, um, this uh, is very similar to a surface charge, but in this case we have bound charges um, where uh, the polarization um, is dotted with the surface vector. And then, well, yeah, okay. Then this, the second term right here really looks like the potential of a volume charge. Yeah! Okay, so I'm not going to rewrite that because I am a lazy. Um, but in other words, uh, the volume charge, second term, we'll write this up here, um, rho of the bound charges equals negative uh, del dot the, pol uh, the polarization. Um, and I want to say oh, that's going to be a vector. Okay. Um, cool, cool, cool. So with these definitions, we have a surface uh, charge due to the bound charges, and we have a volume charge due to the bound charges inside, and we can rewrite our potential just uh, not based on the polarization, but based on these surface charges. So now we have our potential, let's make that a bigger V, um, I want to make sure I get this right, which also a vector, um, equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, that is a funky 4. Getting so excited and writing too fast. So integral over the surface of the surface charge over um, script R, the distance that you are looking at, dA prime plus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught over uh, integral over the volume um, and then you integrate over the, uh, the volume density um, divided by script r um, over uh, you add it up over the total volume okay so that was a lot of math what does this mean how do we read these equations so the electric potential and therefore the electric field of a polarized object is the same as that 
as the field that is produced by a volume charge density, rho subscript B, and a surface charge of sigma B, a surface charge density, sigma B. So instead of integrating all the contributions of all the teeny, teeny, tiny infinitesimal dipoles, we just find these bound charges and calculate the field produced by these two uh, quantities. Whew, okay, anytime we can get rid of messy integrals, that's a great, great thing. And the good news is there's been a lot of work done on this already. So we can leverage that just because our charges are induced and they're not hanging out there already separated doesn't mean that they're any different. That's what these equations are telling us. So we can treat it like a standard electrostatics problem. Woo! That's great. Makes our lives way easier. Okay, so in the next uh, episode, part two, just threw my book down, we are going to look at a specific example of how you calculate the electric field due to bound charges in a polarized object. So thank you for watching part one and check out part two to see how you actually use these. Yay. All right. We'll see you in part two. Bye.